freaking squirrel opened my cooler. Now I gotta worry about squirrels too. He freaking gnawed the crap out of my cooler. Look at that. Just trying to fish and getting attacked by squirrels, man. What's up anglers and anglets, it's your boy Sven and welcome back to my channel. So for today we're back down in Oceanside fishing a different jetty. As far as I can tell, jetty fishing down in Oceanside is pretty rough. These waves are getting pretty aggressive. You can probably hear them splashing right behind me. The goal for today is just to see what we can catch. And if we're lucky, we can put together a catch and cook. I got a really special recipe I wanted to try. Amber helps me troubleshoot it. All we need is fish and I can go ahead and start cooking. It's a beautiful day. It's actually pretty foggy. It's kind of cool. Like I said, the waves are a little rough. I layered up so I should be able to keep warm. Let's gear up and see what we can catch today. Got my usual high-low rig. Top one's got some green peas. Bottom one's got a good old reliable shrimp. But before we get started, as usual, we gotta talk about safety. Down in Oceanside, all the waves seem to be really aggressive. It kind of makes jetty fishing relatively dangerous. Just kind of watch out where you step. A lot of these rocks around me have been splashed. So there's a good chance they're slippery or they're in the splash zone. You wanna stay away from those as much as you can. Take your time moving around. If you happen to need to go down to the water for anything, pick a relatively safer spot. The waves might be a little too rough over here. Well, that's what I get for being so close, right? That's okay. That's why I brought extra clothing. Always be prepared. Let's try right here. Still might be a little too rough here, but we'll see. Some good nibbles, come on. No luck at this spot. We're gonna move to a different jetty, so be right back. This looks like a nice spot. Let's give this a shot. Nice! My boy with the first opal eye of the day. Yep. Oh, we got hooked for both hooks. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Oh, these are some good ones. Yeah, there we go. First fish. Nice! We got our first opal eye. Woo! Nice, look at the sky. He's a relatively decent size. Looks to be about seven inches, give or take. Love how beautiful their eyes are. That's why they're called opal eyes. All right, let's get this one back. Thanks for playing, Mr. Opal Eye. Caught that guy on a single green pea. Using a size eight hook, I might have a better chance. Since I am targeting opal eye more than anything, their mouths are really small, so they're notorious nibblers. Now ideally, I'd like to catch another opal eye. My catch and cook for today is kind of centered around it. I can use any fish, but opal eye is definitely what I'm looking for. Well, that was technically the second one. Nibble, are you on? Nice, caught another opal eye. This guy's pretty small, maybe like five inches. Back you go, dinky boy. Thanks for playing. And we're back at this spot. The waves are calmer over here now. Gonna give this another shot. I think the bite's starting to pick up. 
I just got tagged again. Doesn't feel like a big one though. Yep, nibble, 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 nibble. Oh, there we go. Nice, it's a small opal eye. Probably like five inches, but hey, at least they're still here. Where there's one, there's probably more. Last rig snapped, still using the size eight hook. Pure Life over here just caught another nice opal eye. It's an uh, eight incher. That's a pretty good size. Yeah. It's a small one, but you're on fire, man. How many opal eyes have you caught so far? Five. Pretty good. I think I'm at like four. Four, yeah. Nibble. It's a good nibble. Give me a decent size opal eye, come on. Oh no. Man, I think that was a decent one too. Why is this catch and cook so hard? <laughs> I mean, the one that I caught first was a good size, but it was also my first fish. It's all fair game, but it's just like, the first one was a really good size. I do see a couple small opal eyes down there. I'm getting some good nibbles. I just don't know if it's on. Are you on? Yeah, another opal eye. Quick release. Oh, another dinky one. A little opal eye. There is no size limit to these guys, but I'm not trying to keep anything too small. It's not worth my time. Well, thanks for playing, tiny opal eye. Nice. Yeah, another dinky opal eye. I'm never gonna get the good size one today, am I? Freaking squirrel opened my cooler. Now I gotta worry about squirrels too. He freaking gnawed the crap out of my cooler. Look at that. Come on, man. Just trying to fish and getting attacked by squirrels, man. So far, the method kind of reminds me of trout fishing. You kind of find a nice calm spot and then hope fish are chilling there. In this case, it's literally just any place that has some rocks protecting the water behind it. On the bright side, I will say that opal eyes are fairly easy to catch. All you need is green peas. Want well, to know a cool thing about fishing with frozen peas? It's a vegetable. Just put like 50 in your pocket and you can just keep fishing for opal eyes. Look, that's a very healthy squirrel. Likes to eat the peas. It's adorable if it wasn't a bandit. Nice! Another opal eye. Still kind of small though. I'll let this one go. If I catch one more dinky opal eye, I'm going to call it. Come on. Nibble, nibble. Another oh, tinky opal eye, man. Oh. All right, let's get you on back. Be free, little one. Pure Life has graciously donated an opal eye for my catch and cook. Decent size opal eye, actually. Not too big, not too small. I think perfect eating size. Perfect eating size, definitely. Thank you for the opal eye, considering you caught all the good ones. <laughs> Well, first things first, we gotta clean up the fish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna gut him, defin him, dehead him. Well, that's about it. We're gonna scale him too. Let's go ahead and scale the fish first. So for scaling the fish, you can use a knife. That works as well. But if you have an actual tool for the job, it works even better. You take the scaler and you just kind of run it up. I already took off like half the scales on this side. This thing is so awesome. Just get off all the scales. And then do the same thing to the other side. Fish is all scaled. Natural coloration, the fish catches the story when you scale it, brush it back the other way, and you can restore it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna defin them. Simple, just take a pair of scissors and just start chopping away at the fins. Now we gotta gut the fish. Take a knife, go right up the butthole, then remove all the guts. Cut off the head, feed it to the beach chicken. All rinsed, all clean. So for today's catch and cook, we're gonna make a spicy Korean stew. The thing about catch and cooks is, yeah, I could have brought all the stuff I needed and minced, chopped out here, but Pure Life and I have been fishing for- Nine, 10 hours. Yeah, I'm way too exhausted. Amber packed everything I needed to do the catch and cook. All we gotta do is prep everything else and we're good to go. So this is a little container of lemon juice. So we're gonna take our fish, plop it in this bag, then we're gonna put the lemon juice in. 
This will help firm up the flesh of the fish, so it'll hold a little bit better in our stew. Don't forget to also clean up your stuff. Amber actually wrote me a little instruction sheet so I don't mess up. This portable stove is gonna be our flame source for today. And this is gonna be our pot for the stew. So here's some already partitioned out water. Just gonna pour it in. Next, we're gonna add some dried mushrooms and some dried seaweed to simmer. The mushroom and the seaweed, we're not gonna eat them. We're just boiling them to get out the flavor and the umami. That'll help flavor our broth. Take some of the stock we just made, and we're gonna mix it with the soup base. Catching cooks don't have to be super complicated. If you can prep anything at home, might as well save you some time. Just a little bit to liquefy it. We'll just leave it right here. We got a bag of Korean radish and white onion. You're gonna to wanna to simmer it for about 10 minutes. So put the lid back on and now we just wait again. All right, tell me what you think. Oh, hopefully it's the best for this, it's so good. Soup is amazing. Perfect amount of spiciness. Onions are well cooked. The broth is the best though. If you were to rate this dish, what would you give it? 9.5 out of 10. I love Korean food. So 9.5? 9.5. Overall, it's like super good. And that's about it for the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna sit back and relax and eat my well-earned soup. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.